All right, 94 Ford Mustang. Rear brake pads and rotors. First you wanna do is jack it up and support it properly. Okay, remove your rear tires, 21 millimeter for the lug nuts, okay? Then you wanna remove your caliper assembly and it's held on by two 13 millimeter head bolts. I used the ratchet wrench, worked the best. Okay, and you only got those two out. Get yourself a little screwdriver. And what you wanna do is pry the uh, caliper off. And this is the type you got the piston, you got to screw back in for the uh, parking brake. So, okay, caliper's off. Then you need to get yourself a 15 millimeter wrench. Put it on the caliper bracket bolts. One here and one down here. Okay, right about, right about there. Okay, get yourself a medium duty sledgehammer. Okay, here it is. And you want to break those bolts loose. So what I do is I hit my wrench with my hammer, and then I help break it loose. And I'll hold on to it with the other hand down here, and I'll break them loose. Okay. Then you can remove them with a ratchet wrench or use a air tool. Okay. The other one's down here. Then you take those two bolts out and you can remove your caliper bracket, okay? Okay, here's your caliper bracket bolts, 15 millimeter heads, remove both of them. And now you can remove your caliper bracket. All right, it's gonna be on there because it's a rust ridge. Pry it off best you can. <laughs> I have to give me a screwdriver. Pry it off. happens when you got things that are rusted on there all right so now you got your rotor it's loose if it's not loose and bonded then you need to smack it with a hammer mini mini sludge in between your studs try not to hit your studs you can use penetrant also if you're going to replace the rotor which i am you can smack the rotor surface the vibration breaks it loose so then now you can remove it okay see this surface here this needs to be nice and clean looking like that if you get a, if you got any high spots of rust, the rust will cause the rotor not to sit true and it will wobble and that will give you a vibration upon breaking. Okay. Now for your caliper bracket, you need to remove your brake pads. Since I find my hammer again, I'm sitting down outside, my rack is tied up. So so, you remove your brake pads. Okay. And you want to remove the little hardware that's on there, abundant clips. Okay. So now you see this surface here, it's all rusty. When rust forms, it expands and it expands underneath those clips and the, you know, the abundant clips the hard hardware and what it does it it squeezes on the pads and causes the pads to stick in there and they won't allow them to slide back and forth and give you good braking it'll always be like sticking and wear abnormal wear on your brake pads so you need to clean that up and then also you need to take these make sure these ain't aren't frozen and then take them off Clean them up. Take them off. Put some new Sil Glide on there and push them in. Do not pack it with Sil Glide. You won't be able to compress it to push these in all the way. Okay. I'll use a angle die grinder on an angle with a, a sandpaper disc to clean these up. And same thing with my axles or my hubs. Okay. Okay. You got the axle or the flange hub cleaned up. Next you need to do is push your piston back into your caliper. You have to use this type of tool. Make sure you get the right adapter that matches the holes in the pads. On this particular one I had to grind the little slots down a little bit that they would fit in the holes in the piston. 
and then <clears throat> also after you get it pushed in you want to make sure those notches on the piston are one here and one here because sometimes the pads will have little notches on them okay here's my tool here's my adapter see how i had to grind them down a little bit they're not completely round so they can fit in the pistons more better and see how the little holes are here at three o'clock and here at nine o'clock okay sometimes the pads will have little nubs on the back of them and they'll need to go into that hole on the piston okay if you don't have them lined up then the pad is sick crooked all right and give you an even where sometimes you have to use a extension on your tool to turn the piston that's what i did if you don't have one of those then you have to use a pair of vice grips and a c-clamp c-clamp pushing at the same time as you take your channel locks sorry channel locks on the piston and try not to damage the boot okay but when you do get these calipers off you need to inspect your boots and also make sure not leaking any fluid around it. If it is, then you might as well just replace the caliper. Same thing with your caliper brackets. If your slide pins are frozen, just go ahead and get a reman caliper assembly and replace it that way. Only hard part about it is doing the perk and brake cable. But I always, what I always do is on this particular one, yeah, you have to bend it open a little bit for the cable to come out all right so i got my slides cleaned up and then i'll paint them and i got them a uh, new lube inside there remember don't pack them with lube and never compress it all right so i gotta go paint that one and then before i put my rotor on i want to put a fine film of anti-seize on there to help keep it from rusting Okay. All right, now it's time to put the pads into the, uh, the hardware on the pads and also put the pads into the uh, caliper bracket. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna put the hardware on there like that. So these are facing towards the back side, not the front side, otherwise they'd be hitting the rotor. All right, then you need to slide them in there and what I do is I get them started on one side and I push it, the spring in part of it, and I slide the pad like that, bring it up in there, okay? I got them both in there. And now I need to just go ahead and get this bolted up, okay? Okay. Got your ANSI's on your axle. Get your rotor on there. Get cleaned off with soap and water, brake clean, glass cleaner. Get your caliper bracket. Get that mounted. Torque it to 65 foot pounds. Put your pads in there. If you haven't already. Then what you need to do is get your caliper. Make sure it's lined up. Make sure you get these slide pins where they can fit onto these notches. One side's for it one side's not so you want to put the flats in on the brackets on the slide pins i mean okay so we'll get this on there and take two hands okay mm. remember the slide pins you got slots on the slots towards the calipers all right so you got your little caliper bolts in there you got them snugged up and then you want to torque them to 25 foot pounds okay be careful that you don't have the spring and the pad stuffed inside here. Make sure they're both sitting like this inside there. All right, so now that you got that done, you need to do the other side exactly the same way. And then when you get that done, you need to put the tires on and you wanna put the lug nuts on, tighten them up in a star pattern. And you wanna to torque them to 100 foot pounds. And then what you wanna do is go inside the vehicle Push the brake pedal to the floor a couple of times. Make sure you got a good, decent, firm pedal. So you're taking up the gap inside the hair between the piston and the pads. So 
So when you do put it in drive or reverse, you'll have brakes, okay? If you don't do this, you won't have brakes and you'll have to pump it a couple of times before you'll get that clearance taken up. So, so that's it. That's how you do your, your rear brake pads and rotors. And uh, if I helped you out, hopefully you can help me out by subscribing. And uh, I appreciate it. Thank you.